So we purchased a car last year, a Tesla Model 3, and I wanted a way to be able to haul my bikes around. And I saw this stealth hitch before I even got my Tesla. I went out and purchased one last December, so it's been sitting in my house for several months just staring at me. And I really wanted to install it, but A, it was cold, rainy, or I just didn't have time to do it. So we finally got time to do it. And I decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and try to tackle this myself after reading their instructions because it tells you step by step on what to do, what tools to use for each step. There's literally instructions for everything so you don't have to worry about it. And we followed these instructions to the T and it worked perfectly. My boy Michael from Rusty Roads did a full install of this so if you want to see a full install go watch his video i didn't want to film a whole install because he already did one so sharing the love go check him out he makes a lot of videos about aerial riders as well as other e-bikes and e-scooters and he did a full install of this i'll leave a link to that video in the description uh, if you want to know how to install the stealth hitch and i got something else to show you that i got this week it's really awesome and this is the destination e by hollywood racks i did not purchase this bike rack they sent it out to me for free to make a review about it they did not review this video they did not give any input on my opinions about this bike rack so i just wanted to go through everything today and show you what it's really about it is awesome totally worth the price 100 percent and i'm going to show you how to a load and unload fold it up and all that so these are the clamps that you use to secure the bike to the frame to this frame so that it stays upright and then what you'll do after you do that is you go down and cinch down these straps so we're going to kind of go in reverse and then go back and do it all over again so as you can see here it's got a clamp right here that clamps to the frame but it's loose how do i get it off how does this work well these have locks integrated into them so you just basically unlock it here and then you'll be able to unclamp the clamp so this is a security feature built into the racks and if you tighten them up once you get to your tightening point you can lock them and then nobody's going to be able to untighten this and steal your bike now you're also going to have straps down here on the tires that hold it, everything in place but this is your initial point of where you contact the bike to hold it in place and also where you lock it so nobody steals your bike now with this being locked and somebody does try to steal it they're going to have to pry this off also your battery is not back here so what are they going to do when they steal it They'll have to buy a new battery. That's the most expensive part of your bike. This is a really nice handy feature to have on this rack. I'm super happy to have it. I would rarely leave my bikes on the back of the car just sitting outside where nobody is attending to them. But I honestly feel very comfortable about doing that now uh, with having this on here. I would probably add an additional security measure by locking up the bike to the frame or to the other bike if you had the second one attached on here because you can attach a second bike so today's video i'm going to demonstrate how to a unlock this and b unload the bike now with my car i don't have to worry about clearance i can just come into the trunk here and it literally barely misses the grip and i could also move it out of the way if i needed to but in the trunk here we got a ramp and basically this is a portable pretty portable it's about two feet long and it has a little knob back here that you turn to loosen it and then you can slide this out and then you just turn it around tighten it and then here you go here's your long ramp now this has a little hole here that attaches to the bike rack and there's a little piece right in here where it sits down in place so i'm going to show you how this works on the one that doesn't have a bike just so you can see it it's a little harder to see it with the tire in the way but this ramp just basically sits in this little section here there's a dedicated spot for it to sit in a little hole and that hole just goes right in there and it fits in place so you're not going to knock this ramp over if you accidentally kicked it or something it's going to stay in place uh, especially when you're rolling your bike down you don't want that to fall off so that's a really nice feature and it really does work very well 
So after you get your ramp installed on the back of the bike rack there, you're gonna undo these little straps. And there's two for the front wheel and one for the back. And all you have to do is go over here, hit this little button, and it will loosen the straps up and you just pull it down. Now this front one here, it actually wraps up around the wheel. So you just pull it up around like that and it holds it in place so it can't roll forward if anything was to happen. So this is pretty pretty nice that it just goes up here and just kind of holds it in place a little bit more uh, when you pull it up like that. So you just kind of push that out of the way, push this out of the way, and then you have two more straps that basically you do the same thing. Push and pull the strap off. Okay. All while leaving this clamp in place. You want this clamp to stay in place. And then this last one here, You just pull it off. So these two middle pieces right here, they do twist and you can also take them out and put them in other holes if you need to make adjustments. So you can take these off and adjust them. They have knobs on the other side. So if you needed to move it up to the other hole up here, if you have a different size tire, like I have to adjust mine for my between the 20 inch rims and the 26 inch rims, I have to make adjustments. So that's why they have holes on the middle parts, which is pretty nice. And then they have knobs, so you don't need any tools to change those around too. Now that we have the straps off the wheels, we're gonna go up here to the locking grip and unlock it so that we can untighten it to get the bike off. And it's really that simple. This is the last step and then you just roll the bike down. It takes a matter of two minutes to do all this if you weren't filming. But you just loosen this up. We're gonna loosen it up all the way so I can get it off and on easily because this is gonna be a quick process. So then you just loosen that up and just move it out of the way. It goes right over here. And then you can roll your bike down like this. And that's that. Then we'll take the ramp and do that. And then this will just go in your trunk or your back seat or something like that. We're gonna set ours down for right now. Now, the other feature of this bike rack is it has this little mechanism here. It's just a little pin that goes inside and then it locks in place on the other side over here. So you basically just take this off. It's a little, it's kind of hard to see on video, but take this off, pull it over, and then your pin will come out. So let's see if we can do that. There we go. Then it has a little cable that holds onto the rack so you don't ever lose this. And you just let it dangle. After you get that done, you come over here, you pull these little straps off. So there's a little hole in here, so depending, on uh, how much you need to tighten it. You just do that and it goes in place. So you take those off and unclamp it. One on each side. So pull that off, unclamp it. And then this will go down. And then you just clamp this in like this. And then your strap just goes back over. It's just basically doing the exact same thing you do when it's folded out. So pull that in. Take that strap and you can do most of this on one side then from here you can fold it up and it just folds in place right there then you just take that pin slide it back through the hole and clamp it over here and that's pretty much it so then we'll take it out fold this back down like so so then we take our pin, stick it in here like so, get that wire out of the way. Then you just put that little closure wire over that pin to hold it in place. Then you can't lift it up. From here, you go ahead and take these straps off, unclamp it on each side, and then we'll lift this back up. So it just lifts up like that. Clamp it, put the straps over, clamp it, 
put the straps over. It's literally that easy. So that's now secured and in place. And then you're ready to load up your bike. It literally is that many steps and that's it. Now, when you do close this and move it towards the car, you'll want to put your straps in. So you just take these and you'll strap it in to the little thing here, little buckle. So when you're transporting it around without any bikes on it, you're gonna have your straps like this. So before you load the bike, you have to take them all the way off. So I always just take them, move them down to the bottom, get them out of the way, and then I can roll my bike up. So from here, you grab your ramp and untwist this, slide it, and then tighten this back up. Again, the ramp just sticks in this little area right here and just kind of sits in there and stays in place. So when you load it up, it's easy. So we'll grab our bike, get our tire on here, grab the back of it back here, and kind of line it up. That's kind of what I do. Hold the front brake and kind of just line everything up and then push. Make sure your tires are in the grooves. As you push up, you shouldn't have to worry about them coming out of the grooves. They'll kind of set in place as you go. And then just kind of lean your bike over as you're going past this security bar here. Make sure the pedals are not interfering with this. And if they are, remove them. So we'll grab this handle here, take this safety strap off right here. And on this side, we use the short one. On the other side, if we were loading two bikes or loading this bike on the other side, we'd use this longer one, uh, which is the same exact mechanism. It's just longer to get over the second bike. This one can be moved. So if you need to get it in an area where you're, you have some distance to attach it to the other bike, this one's nice and it moves and it also comes off. It comes with the permanent one. If you want that instead, you can take this off and swap them. So just so you know that. But all we're gonna do now is just take this, clamp it on the bike. Once we get it clamped on to where it's holding in place so it doesn't fall off whenever we're strapping it down here, we're just gonna have it kind of loose and then we'll come back up and tighten it because sometimes you gotta roll these around to get them in the right orientation. So we'll take that strap. This is the one that moves. Move it up to the tire. Stick it through in between the spokes. You'll have this little rubber piece. You want this part to be on the rim itself, the flat part. So stick it through your spokes. Make sure you're not bending any spokes when you tighten it down. You take this strap and you just put it in the buckle here. And we'll just cinch this down and kind of help it by pulling up on that. So there you go. That first one's really tight. I don't see that it's going to be moving anywhere. And then you don't have to worry about it uh, very much anymore from here. Now you'll do the other straps. Again, this is where you can make your adjustments if you have to move it to one of those other holes in the middle. Take that, run it through the spokes, make sure you got it in between and it's not squeezing anything. Take that strap, put it through the buckle. Again, I've already made my adjustment, so there's that. And then just grab this little thing here and pull down until you got it really tight. So you just take the strap, run it through, go to the other side. Watch your chain, make sure that you go on the other side of the chain, underneath of it there. Pull it over, grab this, stick this through the buckle. And now it's super, super tight in there and secure. So we'll pull that ramp off. We're just gonna throw that back in the trunk. Again, it barely misses. Might be hard to see on video, but now we'll come back here tighten this all the way we'll take our key see how it's tight right now if we turn it it loosens it so now you can't tighten or loosen it when it's like that so now it's all secure and ready to go and we can take it off and go to a bike trail now the other function and last function of this as you can see here there's another knob You'll turn that knob, loosen it, and then pull it forward 
and that allows you to tilt the bike like this the bike rack and hang on I'm gonna need two hands for this but now this is a little scary <laughs> but it does work so if you do have an SUV or something that you can't get into your hatch or your trunk then you can lay your bikes down and you can do this with two bikes as well they are very secure and it's built very well so it can withstand the weight and that's pretty cool especially when you have some e-bikes and you still want to go grocery shopping or something with this locked up you definitely can do that you just pull this back in the little notch here tighten it down make sure you get this pretty good and that's that so that's how you do it now as far as removing the hitch it does have a locking hitch pin here so you just same key that you use for your uh, locks up on the on the clamps you'll use the same key to unlock this and then your pin will come out and then you can pull this off you have a little handle here this is what tightens the bike rack to the hitch and clamps it down so that it doesn't wobble or shake whenever you're driving it does still go up and down a little bit but it's night and day difference between the other rack i had and uh, this is a big reason why i switched in the first place so this little mechanism here you just have to make sure it's tight make sure that it's pointing either sideways or up and don't have it pointing down to the ground so it doesn't drag if you go over anything um, but that just kind of pulls everything together and holds it in place and this is really nice because it has a little metal piece here to stop it from going too far so when you do slide it in it's always at the right place for the the uh, hitch pin some racks they you just kind of have a free play here and uh, that doesn't work out very well so there's that let's just make sure we got everything tight oh this is good and we are good to go The other thing new in my life is we got a new bike rack for the Tesla. It's a Hollywood rack. So they sent that out to me to review. It's the Destination E. It's made for e-bikes. It's really, really cool. It's got a lot of features. My other one that I tried that failed, um, it didn't really fail. It just wasn't super secure. It did not fare well in many circumstances and it sat too low to the ground. So that's why I went out on a venture to try to find a better bike rack. I reached out to Hollywood Racks. They were the first company I reached out to because I really liked their bike rack. I thought it was better than anything on the market that was specifically made for e-bikes. And if the bikes that I ride, aside from the Grizzly, um, will fit on this rack perfectly fine. Now I'm gonna attempt to bring the Grizzly out to a trail and see how well it does on the back of it because that bike rack is super sturdy. If I feel like it could hold the weight of the Grizzly without the batteries. It's only if, I think this has, the bike rack has a max weight of 70 pounds per bike, but I'm pretty sure it can hold more than that. We'll, we'll at least try it once. The difference between this bike rack and the Thule Easy Fold is the Thule Easy Fold, you have to buy longer straps to fit the fat tire e-bikes. You have to get a better ramp because the ramp that comes with it isn't really made to load fat tire e-bikes like this. And the Destination E comes with both of those included. It's already in there. The straps are long enough to fit this bike and the ramp is definitely long enough to easily load the bikes up. So. The only difference between the Easy Fold, other than those two things, is the Easy Fold actually folds in half. So you can literally, once you get it, all your bikes off, your two bikes off, you can fold it in half to take up a little bit less room. And that's good for storage and things like that. And I think it also has wheels on the bottom so you can roll it around. So that's something else new to the channel that I'm bringing to show you. Now I do want to do a comparison, a full comparison of the two racks to show you the differences between the two. Um, but that might be a future video. 
If that's something you guys are really interested in, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, I would definitely like to make that video. I just don't know if it's worth my time. This rack, there's, it's a night and day difference other than the price. Now the price of the Destination E is $6.99 compared to the Thule Easy Fold XT, which is $9.99 before the extras that you have to buy. The one I got off Amazon for free to review was 150 and they make a couple different versions so the one I got does not fold up close to the car. The cheap one and they have one that's a little bit more expensive it actually folds up closer to your car. I think it actually might sit up higher too so if I were to choose between the two cheap ones, I would get the second one, the one with the more rise. But it's a night and day difference between the cheap ones and the Hollywood racks. The Hollywood racks is just made better. It's a lot lighter. So if you, when you lift it up to put it into the hitch, it's so much easier. With it, with the capabilities of them being able to fold up, that's really nice because I can just leave it on the car. I don't have to bring it inside until it's winter. But I am super pumped that they sent that out to me to make a video about it. It is definitely one that caught my attention right away. I was looking at all the best bike racks you can get for e-bikes. And that one might top the list as far as value because it's $300 cheaper than the best one, which is the Thule, which is supposed to be the best made or the Quat or Quayat, I don't know how you pronounce it, K-U-A-T with the little weird U. Um, that one's pretty good too. They got one of theirs that has the integrated tail lights, which is kind of cool. Hollywood Rex, they are not discounting the Destination E right now uh, because it is such a new rack and still so popular. Uh, I would, I tried to get a coupon code to save you guys some money, but they're not offering them for the rack that I have right now, unfortunately. But in the future, if that happens, I'll let you guys know and you guys can save some money. But if you're in, if you're looking for a bike rack, you want one of the best out there that's gonna make it easier for you to load, have all the features that you need and make it so much more simpler on your life to carry your bikes around, especially these big bikes. The Destination E is awesome. You don't have to worry about lifting your bikes up into your bike rack, especially if you have a truck, that sucks. Um, if you have a car, it sucks too, but it's a little bit easier because you're lower to the ground. But uh, if you're looking at bike racks and uh, I, would, I would stop looking, focus on this one. And if you have the budget of $699, $700, then check it out. It's totally worth the price. I've looked at every bike rack for electric bikes over the past few years. And when this one came out last year, I was super excited to check it out. I had to install my stealth hitch, of course, before I could use a bike rack. But um, I'm definitely very happy with my choice and glad that I picked one up. All right, I'm shutting you guys off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.